Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, time to start doing some output transformer testing. And we're going to start with the 6SQ7 EL34 because I'm planning on using the output stage of this amplifier pretty much as is in the new 12AX7 EL34 amp. So I wanted to test two different output transformers to start with and just kind of see which impedance works better with these output tubes. And there's some calculations. So the first formula I tried was one I got from Thermiatic Labs. And when I run the numbers on this, which worked well for my KT120, came out with a little over 5K, I think it was 5.6K, was the ideal output transformer impedance. But then when I look at the tube data sheet for an EL34, they're saying it's more like 3.5K. You go look online, people are saying 3.5K. And I'm also running them at a higher voltage across the tube than a lot of folks do. And it turns out that's the difference between the two. And this amp has always sounded good to me with these 3.5K transformers. But at the time, I didn't have any 5K ones to try. And learned a lot since I first built this little amp. So we're going to do some comparative testing between the two. First, I have went ahead and just installed it in the chassis so that I can take it upstairs. You know, if I breadboard stuff, I can only listen to it sitting here. And this isn't where I usually listen to music. And so... I wanted to go ahead and just install the transformer, then I can take it upstairs to my listening room, and then I can actually compare it on the speakers that I normally listen to, which are some RP600Ms, and see which one sounds better to me, and see what the differences are. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to run these on the Analog Discovery 2, see what differences we see in the patterns and the you know THD testing and all of that stuff. Rule of thumb is that a higher impedance output transformer is going to have lower THD, but it's going to also make less power. So let's see if that rule of thumb actually plays out and get to testing. So okay, we're doing this initial transformer testing on the 6SQ7 EL34 amp. The 6SQ7 tubes have more distortion than the 12X7 tube has, I believe. Again, until I get the amp built, start playing with the operating points and stuff, I think that's going to be the case. I do know that these 6SQ7 tubes vary quite a bit on how much distortion the amplifier has by rolling different tubes in. These are some old National Union tubes that I feel like sound the best of all the ones that I've rolled into this amp tried like the metal cam ones they just have a ton of distortion and these glass tube NU ones sound really nice the Sylvanias also sound good have a slight bit more distortion and they're not quite as crisp sounding but anyway let's get into the subject of this video which is comparing the two output transformers and the red channel is the 5k ed core and the blue channel is the 3.5K ed core. And on initial looking at this, this isn't quite what I expected. I always heard, and you know, the whole rule of thumb is that a higher impedance transformer is going to make less power, but it's also going to have less distortion. Well, in this case, it's making less power and it has a little more distortion. But I'm sitting here looking at the difference, and if you look on the upper right, you can see the percentages. You can see it's about, it's approximately about a quarter of a percent of distortion between the two channels. And that's really not going to be audible. And in this case, they're fairly even. If anything, the lower impedance one has a little bit lower distortion. But that's not telling the whole story. So next, 
we're going to look at the frequency response of the two different transformers. And as you can see, once again, they're almost parallel as far as the frequency response. We got very little roll off even on the high end. Low frequency is really nice on both of them. We got a little bump here around you know, a little over 20 hertz down to about you know 50 hertz. It's got a little boost on the bottom end, which is going to give it a nice bass sound, which this amp definitely has. But you can see the 5K transformer has a little lower output level compared to the 3.5K at the same input signal. It's about 1.5 dBs lower. To be expected, having a higher impedance is going to have less power at the same input signal. But the real story is here. Look at the difference in the low frequency THD between the two transformers. When we're down here at 40 hertz, one's at 12% and one's at 3%. That's huge. And then as you can see, when we get up to about 150 hertz, they cross over. And then in this upper range here, the 5K one does have a slight bit more THD. But let's look at what kind of THD. And it's kind of hard to see down here in this spectrum thing, but you can see where they're overlapping here. One of these is a lot lower in these odd order harmonics. So if we switch to the plotting the second order harmonics, we can see that they don't change a whole lot, but you can see the blue line shifts more. But here's the critical one. Here's the third harmonic distortion. And look how much lower the third harmonic distortion is on the 5K output transformer. And this is the stuff we don't want to hear. And we're pulling this at 4 watts, which is, you know, pretty deep into the distortion profile of this amplifier. If we look back here real quick, you can see up here at 4 watts, you know, it's pretty steep near the end of the curve of the power output. So we can really get a good feel about, like, what kind of nasty distortion each one of these has. And this 5 K1 just has got almost inaudible amounts of the third order harmonics where this one is pretty extreme even in this you know 1k to 5k range which is where you know people's voices are and stuff it's going to have a lot of odd order harmonics which the 5k one is going to be way down here which you're not going to hear and this is going to have a much cleaner bass response, much tighter sounding bass than this 3.5K one is, even though it's putting out a little more power. So again, this is the second order chart. And then there's the THD. Now if we do the THD plus noise, we can see there's not a lot of noise in this amp. We've got maybe a quarter of a percent or half a percent of noise, which just isn't anything that's going to be audible either. So, again, this third order harmonic is what we're going to hear. So, that shows the testing here. And again, if you just test it on this, you might assume that the 3.5K transformer is outperforming this 5K one and say, hmm, it's making more power. It's got a little bit lower THD total. Let's go with it. But again, if you come over here and look at this one and compare the second and third order harmonics, this 5K one is a clear winner on the measurements. So I'm going to jump over to the subjective listening and wrap up this video. So after I did this objective testing, I took the little amp up and hooked it up to my system upstairs and went through a listening test. And I've got one song that I... Earl Klug song that I used for my listening testing because it's got a really wide variety of sounds in it. It's got everything from like really hard bass hits to echoey 
kind of lower bass notes there or you know sounds that have a really interesting decay to them and then there's also some highs that have this real shimmery kind of texture to them that if the amp's smearing you're not going to hear the sprinkly pixie dust kind of sound and i know a lot of folks say you know that our hearing is good for like five seconds or something and i just don't feel that's the case when you're taking a very small little segment of a song and you're listening critically for certain things about the sounds in that clip and so hey you know it was repeatable i tried it back and forth about half a dozen times it's like yeah that's there no that's not there can't hear that anymore can't hear the violin but i can hear it in this one i can't hear it in that one the shimmering's different all of that the echoey bass note is different the other thing that i do is i have this little decibel meter that i got off amazon and i know this thing is scientifically you know lab accurate but it gives you a very good idea of the decibel levels and so i try to equalize the decibel levels between the two samples so that i know that i'm not being impacted by the sound and i'm pretty sure i can get it within a db of each other with this so i know that one's not you know it's not hey that sounds better because it's louder you don't have that going on i can set it for the max let this one note hit and then look at the max and if they're identical or very close then i know that yeah they're pretty much the same sound pressure levels so in testing the 3.5K one definitely makes more power at the same drive from the input tubes or the output tubes. It's a few decibels louder at the same volume knob level, which I expected, and we saw that on the analog discovery too. But the interesting thing to me, and this took a while of back and forth listening to catch, at first they sounded pretty similar. Then I noticed in the bass response, the 5K one had a more delicate hand if that makes sense what i was hearing with the 3.5k was actually a little louder bass hits but they didn't have the clean definition that the 5k ones had and this one definitely preserved more detail down in the lower bass the mid to upper range pretty much sounds the same i couldn't hear a lot of difference and the 3.5k ones make more power if that was important to you so folks that have built this amp with these 3.5k ones you're not missing a whole lot unless you listen to music that's got a lot of bass in it but i do feel like these 5k ones are cleaner down in the lower portions and it just sounded more I'm not going to say they, the liveliness of them sounded any differently. It just sounded more rich with the 5Ks. And so definitely going to go with a 5K output transformer with these EL34s running them at this level. And as you saw in the Analog Discovery 2, with higher second order or even order harmonics and lower odd order, I think that accounts for this richness that I'm hearing. And then obviously the less distortion in the lower bass. I think the 3.5K is just smearing the bass into a like a slam where the 5K is painting a nicer picture with the bass notes. And it just sounds better. And I'm willing to give up a little bit of power. I think when I hook this thing up to my phono stage, which has got a pretty hot input, that it's going to still get loud enough for my use case. That's another reason to use the 12AX7, because this thing is going to need some drive to be able to really work well with these higher impedance output transformers that are going to sound better. So, where do we go from here? been talking to Matt at Musical Power Supplies. We chatted back and forth and I told him I was on the fence so about a 3K or a 5K. I think he said he's got a new winding machine. And he wants to really wind up some really nice ones for this project. And 
honestly, I would rather use him as a source for this, given he's local, he's just the next state over, and or two states over, close by anyway, and so the shipping's going to be super cheap, he's a small organization, and I've heard his transformers sound really good, so I'm hoping to be able to get some of those to compare the Edcore 5K to the Musical Power Supply 5Ks. I'm not sure that the little ISO Tango transformers make sense for this use because when I look at their frequency response table, when you're using the 5K winding of that multi-tap transformer, it loses a lot of lower end response, which is normal when you use multi-tap transformers and you're using less of the winding for the impedance that you need. And so probably gonna be sticking with some single wound transformers for the outputs on this, at least for the first batch of them. And then later on we can explore possibly some higher end options, maybe look at getting musical power supply to wind up some you know, 20 watt ones instead of these little 15 watt ones, see what those sound like. Maybe look at Thermionic Labs because theirs are 20 watts as well. And again, the shipping was gonna eat me alive on going with them at this point. So I think for now the competition is gonna be between these ed cores and the musical power supplies and see how they do. I don't think Hammond makes anything in this core size. I think they make little small ones and then they make the giant ones. And I do feel like that having a transformer that's gapped close to the milliamps that you're running through the tube gives a nicer presentation than, you know, supremely oversized or having you know, two smaller ones, either way can hurt what the amplifier sounds like. So anyway, I think we're going to wrap up this video here. I hope this was educational. I know I'm learning a lot about output transformers and how important they are to the sound of a tube amp. I mean, I kind of knew that, but up till now I've been focused on like the circuit and the tubes and the biasing points and, and you know, the clipping and all that kind of stuff. And I think now I need to shift my attention to the output transformers and trying to optimize them for what we're doing. So anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Not many of you do that. That really helps a lot. Thanks to all you Patreon folks. Thanks to all you folks that make donations at my site. That's super helpful to help me continue to be able to buy transformers and stuff to build these projects to show you so we can all learn more about how to do audio on a budget. Till the next video, have a nice day.